Amen. Thank you so much, guys, for that wonderful time of uh, worship. I felt the Lord touch my heart this morning, and I pray that he has touched your heart and mind also. I'm going to be preaching from a text um, that I was reading this week, and it's about the disciples uh, on the Sea of Galilee in a, a terrific storm. Uh, Mark used the, uses the word uh, mega or megas in the Greek. It means a great storm. And I read that this week and I thought, you know, that's, we're going through a storm here in America, uh, in our church, uh, in our lives, because everything seems to be in turmoil. There's a crisis. Uh, there's, you know, social and racial unrest. There's this... <laughs> This pandemic that's global, going around the world, and in some ways, like Levi said, our, our, we're kind of more uncertain today than we were in the past because nobody really knows for sure how this is going to play out. But we do know for sure that for us, that are, for those of us that are believers, the Lord is with us. We do know that for sure, and He will never leave us nor forsake us. We do know that for sure, and so I want to talk to you about the principles. Uh, we're going to learn some principles this morning about trusting the Lord in the storms of life. How do we do that? And storms take on different uh, shapes and forms, don't they? I mean, they're not always what's going on around us right now. Sometimes they're very personal. The storms are when the pink slip comes or the doctor calls or the uh, divorce papers are delivered, or a rejection letter arrives, or a policeman knocks at your door. I mean, those are storms sometimes that we have to endure that are very emotional and chaotic. But we know the Lord is always with us, and we're to cast all of our cares upon Him because He cares for us. Or maybe sometimes it's just the fact that our storms are, we just think about our future. And we think, man, our future seems very depressing and bleak and discouraging. Sometimes we just get a low point in our, in our lives and we just think, you know, I, I'm in a storm of just, I don't know, a funk. I'm, I'm, I'm just discouraged. Listen, we need to know. That the Lord is going to, he has a plan for our lives. If we will just turn to him, he can see us safely to the other shore. So we're going to read our text here in just a minute. And, and in this storm, the, the, I mean, Jesus has just finished preaching to the multitudes. They're on the east side, uh, on the west side of the Sea of Galilee. And they're getting ready to sail over to the east side. Uh, they're probably leaving from Capernaum, going over to Decapolis over there. So... Follow there. Uh, I like I like the graphic this morning. That looks like a ship in a storm, and and uh, we as Oklahomans we're we're no strangers to storms. It's just that I'm kind of a landlubber, and most of my storms have been on land. Um, but anyway, let's read this uh, the text this morning from Mark. On the same day, when evening had come, he, meaning Jesus, said to them, "Let us cross over to the other side." Note that he said. Let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. It means mighty, ferocious, that word in the Greek. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Let me pause here. These were seasoned fishermen. These weren't uh, people that were just not, you know, accustomed to water and storms. These were seasoned fish fishermen. And so the, the boat was filling with water. The, the, the waves were so incredible that they were coming over the bow of the boat and filling with water. I'm sure they were trying to bail as quickly as they could. But finally, they said, Jesus, they woke Jesus up and said, guess what? We're all going to die. All right. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. 
And you know what? And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And I imagine the disciples looked at each other like, whoa, whoa, did you just see that? But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Let me just pause here. You know, faith is a natural, I mean, fear is a natural response of human nature. We, we just are afraid. And faith is a supernatural response to danger. It's a supernatural response to danger. And when he said, how is it you have no faith? He means, how is it that you have no faith in me? You know, our faith is only as good as the object or the person in whom we have that faith. And Jesus was saying, why don't you have faith in me? And so we as Christians, when we go through these times of crisis and trial and turmoil and problems and we feel like pulling our hair out, we need to have faith in our God and our God alone. And it said, and they feared or were amazed exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? I'll tell you who he was. He was the creator God. A lot of people don't really realize that Jesus also was in the beginning. If you read the first uh, uh, chapter of Colossians, it said he was in the beginning. The Godhead was together in the beginning. And Jesus created all things with the Father and the Holy Spirit. And so he was also the creator and so they had seen him have dominion over disease. And they thought, yeah, that's really cool. He heals the lepers. And, and then they had seen him cast out demons. And they thought, man, that's really cool. He's, he's casting out demons. And they saw him raise people from the dead. And they thought, wow, he has that, can raise people uh, from the dead. But this is a little different. You know why? Because their lives were at stake. You know, when it gets personal and it's you, it's you and your life is at stake and Jesus does something. It is a lesson learned. Amen. You, you, you realize, wow, this is no longer ap academic. This is very personal. And their lives were in danger. They were going to sink in this terrible storm, probably out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, which is about seven by 13, uh, seven miles wide, 13 miles long. And they were very, very afraid. And you think, well, how bad could it get? It can get very bad. In fact, the, the winds come off Mount Hermon to the north and they come down and they can have some exceedingly strong thunderstorms. In fact, here in Oklahoma, I mean, I'm replacing a fence just this week because last weekend we had storms coming through the Yukon, Mustangs, Oklahoma City area that were up to 90 miles an hour. It tore out most of our fence. You put that on water. You put that on water and you have a problem. In fact, it's recorded in 1992, there was a s tremendous sea uh, storm on the Sea of Galilee and uh, they had 10 foot waves that severely, 10 foot waves, that's about half as tall as this sanctuary, 10 foot waves that severely damaged a lot of the uh, seaside structures around uh, the, the city of Tiberias and th that happened in 1992. And so, yes, you facing 10 foot waves in a small boat, maybe a 15 foot boat, uh, maybe a little longer, 18, maybe 20. Still, you're no match for those waves. And so they said, we're going to die. And Jesus said, why are you afraid? Why are you so fearful? Why don't you have faith in me? So we're going to look at some principles, principles this morning. How, what do we do? When we're in storms, what do we do right now when we're, you know, in, in this storm and we're concerned uh, uh, about this pandemic and about all these things going on in our world and, and also political unrest? Our political um, circumstances right now are just crazy. I mean, I've never seen people so angry, so mad, so polarized. We need help. We need help. So number one is this. Subdue your fears. Subdue your fears. Don't panic. Job 5, 7 says this. Job 5, 7. Yet man is born to trouble as sparks fly upward. My wife and I just quoted that this week when we looked out there and, you know, our fence is torn down. And, and, and also, we're going to have to have our, our roof replaced because about a month ago, we had a terrible hailstorm. So it's like we're on this planet that sometimes is, is a lot of you know, creates a lot of trouble in our lives, creates a lot of trouble. And that's normal for living in a fallen world. Unfortunately, we're going to have trouble. In fact, Jesus said in John 16, 13, uh, 33, 
He said, these things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Actually, in the older manuscripts, that word will is gone. It said, in the world you have tribulation. And tribulation is a 50 cent word, which means a lot of problems. That's what it means. In this world, you're going to have problems, continual problems. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So he said, don't just throw in the towel, as they say. He said, L listen, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Be because I have overcome the world and you are a pilgrim here and your home is in heaven. That's where our real identity is. And if anybody tries to create some kind of utopia here on this earth, it's, it ain't going to happen, right? That's bad English, but the meaning is right on. It's not going to happen because we are in a world that's, that's fallen, that's sin-filled, and we're in, we're in the middle of that. But he said, in your troubles, in your storms, I want you to have divine peace, that in me you may have peace. And I want you to be of good cheer. I want you to take heart. I want you to praise me. I want you to be thankful. I want you to look to me. Because I have overcome the world. We need to take that to heart this morning especially. And by the way, this is kind of a sidebar here. But don't listen to the faithless. Don't listen to the faithless. Don't li listen to those people that are, you know, the people that remind you of, of Eeyore, you know. They're always going, you know, things are bad and they're going to get worse. Listen, God is in control and I'm trusting him for whatever outcome. He's going to lead us on to the other shore. Wh whatever his divine plan is, we're going, we're going to get there. Uh, we know that, uh, l let me just say this, don't look for light in the darkness. Some people, when they get into uncertainty... Uh, they look in the wrong places. And some of those places are very dark. They're in the kingdom of Satan. So when you are looking for answers, don't uh, look at horoscopes or tarot cards or go to fortune tellers or seances or use Ouija boards or mediums or anything like that. I'm just throwing that in because a lot of people go, oh, well, I, I need some answers. I need to see how this thing's going to turn out. And they want to do that. And King Saul for instance, he really messed up in First Chronicles uh, 10, 13 to 14. He went to the witch of Endor when he was wanting to know, you know, some answers about the future. And it says, then the king answered them roughly. OK, that's wrong. We are in Second Chronicles. We're going to go to First Chronicles there. But it, you'll see that he was judged because he did that. So I just want to throw that in because I know even around here, there's like, you know, Come by and we'll read your future or whatever. So Saul died, it says, for his unfaithfulness, which he had committed against the Lord, because he did not keep the word of the Lord. And also because he consulted a medium for guidance. But he did not inquire of the Lord. When you have a problem, inquire of the Lord. Pray. Therefore, he killed them. The Lord judged them and turned the kingdom over to David, the son of Jesse. And so Saul messed up. And so that's just a warning to us that don't look for light in the kingdom of darkness. Never do that. Never do that. Always look to the Lord when you are in a storm in, in your life. The second thing I want you to look at, the second principle that we're going to look at. Oh, also, let me go back to, to uh, Psalm 1-1. Don't miss this. I, I got I to read this. You need it. Blessed, I want to be blessed. Blessed is the man or the person who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So if you want to be blessed, you need to be that person that doesn't listen to the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But it goes on to say later that his delight is in the, light, uh, in the law of the Lord, in the word of the Lord. You need to look to the, the word of the Lord. Number two, steady your focus. Steady your focus. Immediately consult the Lord. So here they were in this boat, and the boat was filling with water. And they're thinking, we're all going to drown. And finally, somebody says, you know, maybe we should wake up Jesus. <laughs> Let's, let, you know, Jesus is back there asleep, which is really ironic. They're panicking. We're all going to die. Jesus is sleeping, which also shows his humanity. He, he was tired. 
Um, you know, he, he was hungry. When, I mean, he, he, he went through all the human things that we go through. He was thirsty. He, he had a physical body just like we did. But we need to focus upon the Lord. That should be your first reaction. As a Christian, that's our default setting. It should be. Go right to the Lord. I want to focus upon the Lord when I get into a problem. Hebrews 12, 2 says this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That's where we need to be looking. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your personal faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of uh, right hand of the throne of God. So Jesus endured what he did for the joy that was before him, that was set before him. One of these days, Lord, uh, y'all, uh, we're going to be in the presence of the Lord. We're going to have joy unending. It's going to be amazing. And so we need to just be faithful to the Lord until our last breath. I have a little deal on my desk at home and it says, never give up. The Lord is faithful. I hope you believe that. Do you believe that? Yeah. Never give up because the Lord is faithful. And so Jesus rebuked them because of their lack of faith in him. Their lack of faith. And so steady your, your, your focus upon the Lord. I was reading a, a story about a young man named Mark Smith. And Mark Smith was a lecturer at Cambridge University. And he was kayak, kayaking off the southern coast of England. And he got into these really uh, bad waves, treacherous waters. He capsized. And it's funny, the first thing he did is he had his cell phone with him. Evidently, he didn't get it wet. And the first thing he did was call his dad. He said, I need to call my dad. His dad was in the British Army and halfway around the world in Dubai training British troops. But he got on the phone, told his dad that he capsized, told him where he was. His dad, because of his high command contacted the English Coast Guard without delay, and in 12 minutes, believe it or not, a fast helicopter was there and rescued his son from the waters, plucked his son Mark, his grateful son Mark, out of the waters. It just illustrates to me the, the first thing that we should do when we get in trouble, when we're capsized and we're out of, it seem, things seems out of control, call, call dad. Call, call upon your heavenly father and he will help you. He's our first response. Uh, what, that's what our first response should be. And also focus upon his word. Focus upon his word. Steady your focus upon God's word. Whenever, uh, uh, remember in verse 35 in our text, it said on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. We need in these times of distress, the times of fear, and uncertainty to focus upon the certainty of God's promises. The certainty of God's promises. The truth of God's promises. And we need the word because that's where faith comes from. Faith comes from hearing, perceiving the word of God. Romans ten seventeen says this. Yeah, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing or perceiving. That doesn't mean just uh, hearing in an audio fashion. What it means is, is perceiving the truth of. Faith comes by perceiving the truth of and, and hearing the word of God. And so it comes when we come in contact with God's word. This is what God said. And so I'm going to apply it to my personal uh, circumstances. I'm going to apply it to the right here and now. And sometimes it's like, you know, I've never done this before, but I'm standing up on the solid rock of my relationship with the Lord and what he said. He said, we're going to go on to the other side. We're going to go on to the other side. And, and I remember, you know, I was in a low point in my life. And a lot of times when you're in a low point in your life, a lot of times the, the Lord will bring back a scripture to you. It's, many of you have had that experience. The few that are here this morning and those of you that are listening, uh, the Lord will just come. Just a scripture will come to you so clearly when you're distressed in Isaiah 41.10, this is one that the Lord sent to me once. It says, fear not, because that's who we are as humans. Our first reaction is like, oh no. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And so he said, don't be dismayed. Don't freak out. Don't, don't fear he said, because you know what? I am with you and I am your God. 
And you know, if you say that enough, like you are my God, you are my God. You, you are God and you are my God. Wow. My heavenly father is, is God. And he's my God personally. I have a personal relationship with him. When you kind of let that soak in and meditate, this is a great verse to meditate on. When you just kind of like become marinated in that truth, you're going, "Woo, I'm good. I'm good. I can face every challenge. And so many times when our mind starts to just just kind of run crazy and you can't sleep at night and, and you're tossing and turning in the bed and or you're just pacing the floor, we need to say, no, the Lord is with us. He is our God and he will give me the strength that I don't have. I don't have to run to the gym right now. He's going to give me supernatural ability and strength and he's going to help me and he's going to uphold me from going down. Fear not, I am with you. I will help you. So the first two principles are subdue your fears. Number two, steady your focus. And number three, study your fellowship. When we are in trouble, sometimes storms come because of disobedience. You know, that wasn't the case here. That wasn't the case here. The, 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 the disciples were doing basically everything right. They were near Jesus. Uh, they weren't doing anything wrong in open rebellion. Uh, they were in his perfect will. He said, guys, let's get in the boat. Let's go on to the other side. They were doing that. So sometimes you can be doing everything that the Lord wants you to do. And still the storms will come. But you need to study your fellowship to say, is it because God's trying to get my attention? That was the case of Jonah. We all know Jonah and the whale. Uh, Jonah, we're going to read some verses about Jonah. Jonah was trying to run from the presence of God. I tell you what, <laughs> that's not going to work. Okay, you can run, but right, you can you, you can't hide. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, okay, the Assyrian capital, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose, he said, uh-uh. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Again, losing pro proposition. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it. To go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. The Lord said, I'm going to throw out a storm out there. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken up. Let's keep on going here uh, in verses 10 and 12. Then, okay, then the, the men of the ship were exceedingly afraid. And, and he told them basically his story. He said, you know, I'm running from God. God told me to do something. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm on a ship. I'm going to go to Tarshish. Some people believe that was in Spain. And they said, well, they said, well, you know, why have you done this? Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, what shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? We don't want to share in your fate for the sea was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest, this great storm is because of me. What's the point here? What's the point here? The point here is that sometimes the storms come because the Lord's trying to get our attention. We run from God. And we've all had times when we've run from God. I ran from God for about eight years in my life. Others, maybe you have the same story. There was a time that I turned my back on the Lord. And I, I was going through storms in my life. And, and the Lord brought me back to start looking unto him. Because, you know, where can I find my help? Well, I can find it in the Lord. I begin to evaluate our li my life. We all have to evaluate our lives. Where are we? In our lives. Are we walking closely with the Lord? Or you know at times. This is going to sound kind of strange. But at times maybe. Our, our relationship with the Lord. Is so dispassionate. And it's so blase. And we. Are not really. You know we have no enthusiasm. For the kingdom of God. Maybe we're just putting the Lord to sleep. Maybe he looks at us and go, man, you are living a boring Christian life because you don't have a close relationship with me. When you walk closely with the Lord, you will never have a boring Christian life. Never. 
But sometimes maybe we become just so lukewarm that the Lord said, you know what? Your life right now is kind of like a bad movie. It's putting me to sleep. It's putting me to sleep. Now we know that the Lord never sleeps nor slumbers. We know that. But you get what I'm saying. Do you get what I'm saying? It's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit. It's possible to grieve God. And there are a lot of people out there, a lot of people right out there today in this community, in America, around the world that are grieving the Lord. They call themselves Christians, but basically the Lord said, you know, you're not listening to me. I'm just going to take a nap for a while. All right. Metaphorically speaking. So study your relationship, study uh, your fellowship with the Lord. And then sometimes storms come. Well, I'll read Hebrews 12, 5 and 6 because it's important. I was going to jump to the next point. But the Lord, if he loves you like a good father, he's going to correct his child. And, ha and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chasing, chastening or the correction of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Maybe when he throws you in a storm. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son, son whom he receives. So, are you in a storm because of your disobedience? I can't answer that. Only you can answer that. And the Holy Spirit will be very clear with you. You will understand that you're there because of disobedience. Or the Lord will say, no, this is a storm by design. Some storms come by God's design. If we look up to that other point uh, or go back to, to th three there, you see that? The, last uh, the second point there. Some storms come by God's design. Did, did Jesus know that the storm was coming? Yes, he did. And he didn't prevent it because it was going to be a learning experience for the disciples. Trials are the food of faith walking people. Had it not been for this storm, they would have never known that the Lord could com command nature like he did. Peace be still. And the wind stopped like that. And the waves all of a sudden, the waves just were just became flat. No waves. A great calm. Again, Mark uses the word megas. A megas calm. A great calm came over the Sea of Galilee. And so, we need to know that it's not a strange thing. That storms come upon us. And, and it's, it helps us to learn more about the Lord. It helps us to become mature Christians. Because, you know, at first you say, well, I think uh, I, the Lord is, is faithful. And, and, you know, later on in Paul's life, he said, I know that I know the Lord is with me. I know this and I know that. You know why he knew it? Because he'd been walking with the Lord for so long that he became very convinced that it's no longer I think or I hope. He said, I know. I've been through these experiences and the Lord has, has delivered me from so many crises and so I know of his power. I know of his, of his faithfulness to me. James 1, 2 through 4 says this. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Kind of hard to do sometimes. We don't like trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. The Lord will never tempt you, but he will test you. And let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Wow. And so we are to count it all joy. It's kind of a, an accounting term. It means it's not joyful to go through trials and, and, and storms. But understand that it's going to produce in you endurance. The testing. And it's going to give you some strength, some spiritual backbone. And it's going to have a perfect result or perfect work so that you may be complete. And, and that word perfect actually and complete means mature. That you may be mature, lacking in nothing. And the reason you're going to be complete and lacking in nothing because you're going to, you're going to say, I have been in the storm before. I have been there when my boat has been sinking and I have seen the Lord deliver me. He is with me. And you can encourage others around you like, don't give up. The Lord is faithful. Keep praying. Keep looking to him. Keep asking for wisdom. He's going to show you what to do. And so sometimes the storm is quick, uh, quickly over. And sometimes it lasts a long time. Sometimes 
And when it lasts a long time, and when you're, when you're in, in the, the heat of the moment, and you feel like, you know, it's just the circumstances are, are, are disparaging, you need to stand in faith. That's the fourth principle. The fourth principle, stand in faith. So number one, Subdue your fears. Number two, steady your focus. Number three, study your fellowship. And number four, stand in faith. The disciples weren't doing that at this time, but they were going to learn to do that later on. They were going to learn because they were, they were in the school of discipleship at this time. They were in a school learning about who Jesus was and his power and his might. And so they're, they're saying, yeah, he, now he, he has power over death and disease and de demons and over the forces of nature. Wow. Stand in faith. Faith. Why should we stand in faith? Because the Lord cares about you and your storm. The devil likes to isolate you, tell you that, you know, the Lord doesn't care about you or your circumstance. He does. He cares about everything in your life. And Peter said, casting all of our cares on him because he cares for us. And so you need to keep a right relationship with God because God wants to show himself strong. God wants, the Lord wants to stand up in your storm and say, peace, be still. Second Chronicles 16, 9, the first part of that verse says this, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. The Lord's looking for somebody that's going to be trusting him in the storms of life. The Lord is looking at the 7 billion or so people up on this planet saying, I want to find somebody that their heart is loyal. It's dedicated to me. They're looking to me in the midst of their storm. And his eyes are running to and fro throughout the earth to do what? To show himself strong on behalf of those who love him. On, his, on behalf of his children. And their boats are sinking. So sometimes the Lord, he won't prevent the storm. Jesus knew the storm was coming. And he wanted them to go through the storm so that they would become mature. And lacking in nothing. That they would become strong Christians. Disciples. And we can't always trust our own understanding. Sometimes we try to figure it out. But sometimes you can't figure out the solution. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6... Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Uh, all of it? All of it. In the mi middle of your storm? Yeah, in the midst of your storm. And lean not on your under own understanding. We can, we, can, we can say, I think I should do this, but you need to pray about it. In all your ways, acknowledge him. It means pray and he shall direct your paths. So it says what you should do is trust. Don't lean to your own understanding. Acknowledge him. Look to him. Say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I'm in the middle of a storm. My eyes are on you. But he will direct you. To the other shore, to the desired uh, uh, destination that you're supposed to supposed to be at. So, I mean, sometimes you know you just can't figure it out. I mean, when Jesus said, "We have five thousand men here plus women and children. L let's feed them," and they're going, "Lord, I don't know. Maybe you're having kind of you know a brain cramp right now, Lord, because we just have five loaves and two fish. <laughs> Lord, 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 uh, this is not going to work." And he said, just give it to me. Give me those five loaves. Give me those two fish. We're going to have a feast here. And they did. Or sometimes, you know, it's, it's like Lazarus has been dead for four days. And it's like, Lord, are you ro rolling the stone away from that open, that, that sepulcher, uh, from that tomb? Uh, that's not a good idea. He's probably already stinking by now. Lord said, roll it away. And he said, Lazarus, come forth, come out. Or maybe he said, we need to pay our taxes, Peter. Uh, why don't you go fishing? It's like, what? We need to go fishing. And the fish that you cast, the first fish that you catch with a hook, he's going to have a coin that's going to be worth the taxes, the temple taxes for you and for me. That's beyond your understanding. All right. That's beyond your understanding. In fact, just one little quick thing before we finish the last point here is this morning I was driving to church and we had decided, you know, to cancel our services uh, and kind of did it midweek because of all the numbers going up around a thousand every day, new cases. And one of the church members were just on my mind and he just kept being on my mind. I said, Oh, surely he knows. Surely he knows. Kept coming to my mind. So I thought, okay, I've been, I've been down this road before. If somebody keeps coming to your mind, let's check on them. So I called him. He said, Oh, I, I didn't know. I, I was planning to come to church today. 
I was like, wow, that is so cool, Lord. You put him on my mind so that he wouldn't get all dressed, so that he could, you know, sit there in his easy chair, in his pajamas, eating a bowl of Cheerios and watch church this morning. All right. I know some of you are getting used to it. Don't get too used to it because we're going to come out of this one of these days. But, you know, sometimes it's a supernatural revelation the Lord gives us. And so 1 Thessalonians 5.17 just says simply pray without ceasing. Continue to pray and partner with God so that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then because also stand in faith because the Lord. Let's go back to point four there. Look at the last part of that. Because with the Lord, all things are possible and all things are in his control. Do you believe that? It's true. It's true. All things are in his control. He proves that. Not all things are in his perfect will. He allows storms to come. There will be no storms in heaven one of these days. No, uh, he'll wipe away every tear. There'll be no more death, pain, sickness, or dying. Any of that. But right now, he allows some of the... Um, you know, the, the, the consequences of our sin to be manifested upon this fallen planet. Matthew nineteen twenty six says, but Jesus looked at them and said to them with men, this is impossible, but, but with God, all things are possible. That's true. 28, 18 in Matthew says this, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. It's true. Our Lord can do anything. Isaiah 43, 2 says this, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. The operative word there is through, and I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. When you pass through the waters, when you pass through the fire, the Lord will be with you. You're never alone. You're walking through that valley of the shadow of death. You're never going to be alone. So in your storm, be sure to, uh, to subdue your fear, steady your focus upon Jesus, study your fellowship with the Lord, and then stand in faith. Stand in faith. Say, I'm going to trust God. No matter what happens, I am going to be trusting the Lord, no matter what. So Christians must remember this. Let me try to wrap this up. Christian... You sitting there at home, maybe you're around the world. I know we have some people that listen uh, in Africa. That's so cool. When you're in a storm, know this. If you're a believer, Jesus is in your boat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is in your boat. And he is present and in control. And nothing surprises him. And neither has he forgotten about you or your plight. So, therefore... We as believers can be assured that no matter how tempestuous or threatening our circumstances and our surroundings may be, the Lord will lead us safely to his intended destination. Here's the principle. You are to trust the Lord in even the most severe and threatening circumstances. In even the most severe and threatening circumstances that surround you. When the waves are coming over you and over your boat, trust in God. The Lord. David Gooding says this, and I'm 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 wrapping up, but I want to. He wrote about this this incident, and, and he he gives some really good in, insight. He said this: We live in a universe that is lethally hostile to human life. Within our Earth itself, wind, wave, lightning, storm, flood, drought. Avalanche, earthquake, fire, heat, cold, germ, virus, and epidemic, and pandemic, all from time to time threaten to destroy, it, destroy us. The story of the stilling of the storm is not, of course, meant to tell us that Christ will never allow any believer to perish by drowning. Or by any other natural disaster. Many believers have so perished. It does demonstrate that he is Lord of the physical forces in the universe. And that with him nothing happens by accident. And that no force in all creation can destroy his plan for our eternal salvation. Or separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what it's to teach us. Because sometimes... 
It may be our time that the Lord says it's time to come home and we'll be obedient and say, all right, Lord, I'm ready. The best is yet to come. Hallelujah. Paul said this when in his last letter that he wrote it's second Timothy, the last recorded writings that we have is second Timothy. And this is what the apostle Paul wrote. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul wrote that with great assurance. He said, the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed. I tell you what, today, the Apostle Paul, he's in the glories of heaven. I'm looking forward to meeting him one of these days. He is there. Man, his reward has been so amazing. So amazing. So if you're going through a storm right now, know that, you know, the Lord is going to lead you safely home. The Lord was with the Apostle Paul and, and, the, and, and all of the disciples until it was time for them uh, to, to leave this earth until their work was done. And so my prayer is that, you know, I'll stay uh, healthy and doing what the Lord wants me to do until my mission is finished. And when my mission is finished, I'm ready. I'm ready for the pearly gates. But until then, the Lord's going to deliver me from every storm by his will and his way. Whatever his intended destination is, whatever that shore he wants me to land upon, I'll land there. I'll land there if I keep trusting and looking unto him. If I if I don't live in fear and I focus upon Jesus and I make sure my relationship is right with the Lord. And I stand in faith, I can say like the Apostle Paul said, the Lord's going to deliver me from every evil force. And I want to ask you, can you say that, what he said? Can you say what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy? He will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. Can you say that this morning? If not, you need to be saved. If not, you need to know the Lord that created you, that has a plan for your life. You're not to go through life just drifting and doing whatever you think, you know, well, I guess I'll do this or that or, you know, who knows. You need to be praying and say, Lord, show me what I should do. And the first thing that you should do is have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And you may be listening this morning around, from around the world, somewhere on the other side of the planet. Or you may be right here in Bethany, uh, Oklahoma. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Because we should never end a service without giving someone that opportunity. You, you may be listening to this service. Today is what? July 19th, 2020. You might be listening to this service next year. Or two or years or five years from now. But I want you to have an opportunity to accept the Lord as your, your Savior. And you're going to be praying. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You can pray your own prayer. Or you can just pray this simple prayer. It's a simple prayer. It's giving your entire self to the Lord. And knowing that he was died on the cross for you. He shed his blood to take away your sins. He rose on the third day. And he's sitting in heaven. And he will return one of these days. He's sitting at the right hand of God. He's returning one of these days. To usher in the millennial kingdom. And finally the eternal state. With a new heaven and a new earth. So if you feel the Holy Spirit dealing with you right now. I want you to say this simple prayer. If you know that God is knocking on the door of your heart. Will you say this prayer? Say dear Lord Jesus. Please come into my life and forgive me of my sins. I now receive you as my Lord, my master, and my savior. Thank you for your love, which led you to, to the cross to die for me personally. Lead me as I grow in you. Help me to live by faith and to make a difference in this world by living the truth and sharing the truth with others. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen. As I say so often at the, at the conclusion of these services, if you prayed that prayer, uh, I want you to start praying, start reading the Bible uh, every day. I want you to 
find a church or find one online. You can come back here, of course. But, you know, whenever the pandemic is over, uh, find a church that you can fellowship in and grow in. And it's going to be preaching the Bible. So God bless you. Have a great day. Just remember that um, uh, we're, we're going to reevaluate on August the 16th as to where we are as a church about having uh, people come back to the church. Uh, the, the concert that was planned for this Saturday, this forthcoming Saturday has been canceled. So we love you. We're thinking about you. If you need some special prayer, just call the church office. God bless you. Have a great day in Jesus Christ.